Namaste, Losties. Coming up, the best of your Lost theories so far, plus Mr. Horace Goodspeed, ooh, and the four-toed statue. This is your midweek edition of the official fan show for Lost on Sky One. Paul Terry, the editor Hello. of Official Lost Magazine. Nice to see you. Right. Um, stay there because I want to introduce you to a friend of mine. It's Geeky Tom. Hi, hey. Tom. Yeah. Uh, good, good. Hello. Yes, good work. Yeah. Listen, let's, let's forget the formalities because I want to talk about this four-toed statue, which yeah. is, is very, very exciting. Uh, in uh, the episode that we, we saw at the weekend, we saw the back of the fully constructed four-toed statue. It's got to be someone that we know, hasn't it? The fact that we didn't see the face means it's someone that we know. Not necessarily. Okay, what do you think we're going to see at the front of the statue? I think you... it will be a Egyptian god of some sort. Has all the right back clothes for them, you know? They're the dog one and the, the hawk one. Oh, yeah, I like them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, sorry. What do you think, Paul? It's, it's going to be someone we know, yeah, isn't it? Do you not watch Stargate? No, they're all in no, Stargate. I didn't, no, I didn't, I didn't watch Stargate. They all have the, no. the helmets that all disappear. The terrible CGI, yeah. Come over this um, way with me. This guy knows what he's talking about. You're going to shout at me, I know, but all the red herrings that we get on the show, we didn't see, uh, didn't show any kind of foot area. And what I'm saying is, <laughs> we're assuming that's actually the Forto statue in completion. Maybe it's another statue. What? How much do they trick us all the time? Go Seriously. On. That's Hi, fair enough. Him. That's it, fair enough. Okay, yeah, there could be more statues, but they've yeah. all got four toes. Have they? I know who the statue, I think I know who the statue is. Go on, go on. Well, it had long, sort of long, beautiful hair, a fine, shapely back. Where are you going? Uh, we, we, I'm saying it's Juliet. <laughs> Why? Because we were watching this episode, Tom, you'd agree with don't, <laughs> This is called a face palm. <laughs> you'd agree with me. In the episode that was on at the weekend, a La Fleur, we, uh, both of us mistrusted Juliet. She knows more than she's letting on. Oh, that they just built a statue of her and she's some kind of queen goddess. Why not? Because it just does it. Who else could it be? Who else could it be? It could be, could be Desmond. What is your obsession with being somebody off the island? I will bet you okay. twenty pounds. Can we just do chocolate bars? I will bet you uh, uh, twenty chocolate bars. What about curly whirly? I bet you're curly whirly. It's someone we know. Okay. It's got to be the same people that built the temple, though. Isn't Probably. It? Probably the Egyptians or whatever. It's got There's like firm... Egyptians on the lost island. Why are you obsessed with Egypt for? It's miles know. away. It's like the goddess Anubis who was in charge of the after... afterlife, afterworld. Goddess, you know, he's quite merciful. Looked after an island where people came to die. Have you been, uh, been reading this week? No. <laughs> it, was, it would take something pretty big to demolish that statue. Like, Ooh, I haven't thought about this. Yeah. What about a gigantic tidal wave of some variety? Well, uh, well, well, it could be the kind of tidal wave that could bring a ship onto the island. You mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like a tsunami or something. Like a tsunami. Yeah, yeah, yeah it could yeah, be something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's yeah, not that's bad. Good. Oh, here we go. This is a, a post from uh, on the forum from a Dreadful. The evidence is pointing to the statue being of Anubis. Uh oh. <laughs> Some really good pics of him, and got to say they look alike, albeit from behind. Although I've just seen some convincing pictures, it could be of a lady called. Wait. Nefertiti. No, it's not Nefertiti. Nefertiti. It's Tauret. Oh, right. I don't know much about her, but the pics match the head of the statue. It's a funny shape. <laughs> and seems this goddess is heavily linked to childbirth. So is oh. Juliet, kids. So is Juliet. Maybe the, when the statue, the statue is what allows childbirth when it falls down. Uh, everyone's, uh, listen, if, if, if you're on kids my anymore. side, uh, can you send an email to, uh, to lost on sky one at sky.com because this is all actually going on Tom's side. A forum post from Juliet Rule says, the statue is definitely Tauret, who was an Egyptian goddess who protected women during pregnancy and childbirth. She is always holding an... Now, you, you pronounce that an anchor, I think, don't you? Ank. Is it, it's not pronounced ank, is it? I, don't, I think it's ank. I, 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 would, I would like to stab a guess at that. Okay. A-N-K-H. I thought it was sort of pronounced anchor, but ank, anchor, uh, like the one Paul has, in Le Fle oh yes, that's the symbol that Paul's got around his neck. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> oh oh I'm yeah. Right. There were two posts on the forum. <laughs> right, saying that, that means it's a fact, is it, Tom? In my in my book, yes. Uh, we've got an email from Amy. Now Amy is, is shouting this because it's all in capital letters. I won't. Oh, blimey. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, I think, rest, rest your voice. Oh no, we won't do it. Okay. 
No, you fools, the donkey wheel is not the steering wheel, or helm as it's really called, FYI Geeky Tom. Ooh. It's the part of a pirate ship that lowers and raises the anchor. Of course it makes sense. It holds the island in place, bracket space, not time. Sorry for shouting, but I got excited. Uh, well, no, someone put forward the theory last week that the, the, the donkey wheel could be the, uh, the steering wheel. Seeing it again today, it obviously mean, isn't. Well, yeah, it's massive, but... But, but, but uh, uh, Amy seems to be saying it's, it's um, the pirate bit of the ship that lowers the anchor. And, yeah, and it's a bit, bit of the pirate ship, you know. Oh, I'm yeah. easy, I'm not... You know, but I'm I find it quite funny that she's, she's dissing Tom for saying it's, it, it's of course not the steering wheel, that's preposterous, and then she's saying it's the other wheel of the boat. Yeah, so it's, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're kind of agreeing with me, to be honest. Amy, so. just chill out, all right? <laughs> We're all in this together, all right? No need, no need for tears. <laughs> Thank you very much for all the emails uh, and theories that you sent us. We don't have time to read them all and this short amount of time we've got, but we do uh, look through all of them uh, that you do send in to us and let us know if you want to come on and have a Skype chat with us uh, because you could be joining us on the show. Ah, ah, you could be talking to this little fella for real. Oh, oh it's good, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> uh, we've got, oh, we've got a camera phone message from Seamus. I'm kind of wondering if the island is kind of like a heaven type place with, with more being the fallen angel and himself and Ben are struggling for control of the island and the lost two other pawns in the game fighting for it through or whatever um, in, in taking control of the island. It was quite symbolic as of the start of the last episode of the Life of Jeremy Bentham where Locke turned up with a blanket all around him as if it was kind of like Jesus uh, after the resurrection type thing so I don't know if that's a symbolism but I think that's what they might be trying to imply but that's my theory anyway. Thanks, bye. Thank you Seamus. Uh, well, we've said before there is religious uh, symbolism and imagery in there, not a problem with that, but Tom, do you want to... I, I, I try to stay away from these because I get quite opinionated on the subject. I, well, no, get opinionated man, this is what, you know... Well, really I just don't think it's anything to do with religion, that's all. Well, we, no, but you'd agree that there is there is definitely some imagery, and there is there are biblical, uh, yeah. and it does tend to be more Christian than any other religion, I think. Although if this statue is, you know, an Egyptian god, then that's something else. But it does tend to be more Christian uh, imagery and, and references that are put in there. I guess so, but it, it's the, the spirituality of the show. I think does cross across a lot of different, you know, creation myths and you know and, and belief systems. But he was mentioning Third Earth, isn't that, isn't that Thundercats? Was he, was he bringing like a whole other? He's bringing a whole other spectrum onto the program. Yeah. Uh, we've got an email from uh, Make Claws. You can't tell me that Whitmore wouldn't know about all of the losties being on flight 316, and he obviously has ties to Eloise Hawking since he sends Desmond off to her. So, if Whitmore wanted to be on that flight and go back to the island, he could, which makes it seem like he is indeed more interested in the Oceanic 6 going back, which gives some credibility to him saying he has the island's best interest at heart. Uh, I like that. How will you explain it to me? Because he doesn't want Ben, uh, you know, it goes back to the big fight between Ben and, and Widmore that, that it, we think is coming, well I do anyway. Why doesn't Widmore get on that plane and go to the island? Because I think that he knows that... Because he can't. That he can't go back to the island, that's the thing. He wants the island, but there is something, this is just a theory, there is something that's preventing him from being physically on that island. Do you reckon it's the Super Brain computer? Oh, oh. <laughs> for those of you new to us, I for a long time had a big theory about a Super Brain computer. It turned out to be nonsense, and I'm prepared to accept it was nonsense. Tom. Nonsense at the I moment. Quite like reminding you. At the moment, so. you know, season but and a half to go. We, we, did they, why, did, why do you think that, that uh, Widmore didn't get on that plane? But I am starting to think that Widmore could be trusted more than we think he should be trusted. Oh, that's, that's, I don't He's completely like agree with that. Master. He's like Ben, they don't need to be There was something about that conversation with Locke, I was like, and I hate the fact that I was, because I thought, oh, Wigmore was really evil, but there was something that he said yeah. to Locke, I thought, uh, I kind of believe yeah. what we're saying. We've got an email from Catherine. As the Losties are back in Dharma, now, oh, this looks interesting. As the Losties are back in Dharma time in the late 70s, well, we know it's 77 now. Yeah. Uh, then Juliet will be on the island at the same time as young Ben. In season four, the episode The Other Woman, Harper says Juliet looks like someone Ben knew. Oh, this is good. What if Ben and Juliet meet in the past and that is why he brings her to the island in the future? That's good, that, isn't it? See, that's gold. This is what that's we need. fried gold. The cross-referencing yeah. of old yeah, episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, is, this is brilliant. That's, you, you, come on, Tom. That's yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it's great when you get, you know, reminders that yeah. actually 
you know, there's a lot more going on here yeah. and there's a lot of references that we probably have all missed. Got another email from Nick Rowan. Uh, Tom, you're going to be buying a chocolate bar because Aberdon will be seen again for sure. It's a bet we had last week <laughs> where I uh, bet Tom a bar of chocolate that we'll see Aberdon again and I think we will. Good. Well, chocolate bar at stake, so thank you very much. <laughs> If you want to become our friends, not literally, uh, but uh, in the world of the internet, you can join us on Facebook, MySpace, Bebo, uh, and follow us on Twitter. And while we're watching the uh, episode of Lost, just before we record this, we twit away. Yeah, and you can spoil the episode. I didn't spoil the episode. Yeah, did. I did you not spoil the episode. The episode I didn't. I didn't. There are no spoilers. Uh, Horace Goodsby, um, according to his jumpsuit, what's his what's his position? What is he? What is he? What's uh, his armor jumpsuit? What is he? Mathematician. He's a mathematician. Yeah. Yes. Did I, didn't you, re I didn't realise it was a competition. Uh, uh, Sawyer was calling him the leader in '77. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. I, it seemed odd that he would be the leader. Well, in a sense that when the, they first came to meet, you know, Horace in that time period, the three years prior, '74, that he seems to be running things. So three years later, he would still be the boss, I guess. You know, in that sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Although it's whirring, I can hey, hear yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you know, um, it's Richard Alpert that persuades Ben to kill everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When does that happen? Soon. Exactly. <laughs> Supposing it was Sawyer killing those two men, or Sawyer and Juliet shooting those two men, that, that prompts Alpert to say, this is, the truce has been broken, let's, let's get the gas oh, mask. Nasty. Oh, nasty, yeah, nasty. That's yeah, not bad, is it? That's good, yeah. yeah. It's pretty And they go to the arrow as well, and yeah. let's get the heavy ordinance, which could be the, the gas. What do they call it? They called it um, like something like stage one. It's a, you know, go to the arrow, inform the arrow, and we're at something one, like stage one of some kind of, you know, protocol. So that's whatever that is. The that gas protection protocol. <laughs> uh, Horace is, is, is going to become. Uh, He's going to become a key figure. There's going to be more significant he's going to do. I love that we're seeing loads more of him now. Yeah. yeah. Can he get a haircut though? I don't like his hair. Lost don't do wigs and beards. Very no, much, no, they do. don't. He do, they do everything else wonderfully, but wigs and beards. But he, he acts he acts really quite sweet. In oh, that he's episode. good. Oh, he's but, good but I think he looks quite frightening. Is that a weird juxtaposition? He looks quite terrifying, but it's the, probably the two. Only things, because of his you know. bad hygiene. Horace gets killed in the purge. But, yes. But if I if, again, if I remember correctly, Ben uh, is is kind of quite respectful to Horace and and. Does the eye, the eye close that you do with a corpse? Why, why, why is he so respectful to Horace? Well, he, he grew up, he grew up for such a long time, yeah. didn't he? So yeah. you know, how much there's, there's always that conflict in being a bad guy and a good guy. There's always like, there's a dark side of being a good guy and vice versa. So. Oh, I like it. Also, he pops up in a dream with Locke, doesn't he? Yeah. He's um, he's isn't he chopping, chopping a tree? It, well, he's he's in a dream and he's he's stuck in that time loop chopping the the mm. tree. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe Horace is Jacob. Oh no, that's just nonsense. Um, yeah, Listen, I think we're all getting a little bit confused. Let's let's have a breather because our hunt for uh, the biggest lost fan continues. This week, up against Donna, Lawrence, and Kane, is Daryl. Hi, I'm Daryl, and this is my video to tell you guys why I am lost biggest fan. Okay, my first reason is that it's actually become part of my everyday life. Well, I have an example to show you actually. Um, in our history lessons, we were required to make a poster on Mao's China and me and my friend actually managed to incorporate Hurley into our poster. So I'm going to just show you this. It's pretty amazing, some pretty skilled artwork. Is, is that Hurley? Oh, is she nine years old or something? Emily, by the way. That's rubbish! I've been a loyal fan since day one and I'm not going to sit here and show you all the merchandise I have and all that stuff because like you said last week that's not what makes you a real fan well it's like how you get involved with the show and how you think about it and you know what you like about it I'll just tell you a couple of my little theories one is that um, Eloise Hawking is Penny's mother which might be quite an obvious one but yeah, I think she's Penny's mother because clearly Widmore and Eloise Hawking have got something going on on the island. And another one is that, well, it's kind of partly your theory, but you know, I, I really liked it. I think that Aaron is Jacob. So yeah, I love you guys, by the way. I think you are hilarious. And you know, part of my weekly entertainment is watching your Lost Initiative. So thank you and I'm Lost Vegas fan. Uh, she's just won herself 10 extra Aww. points there. Well done, Daryl. Listen, thank you very much for that. I do think she's better than the, the fella in red over there. I suggest. Geeky Daryl. I quite like that. I suggest we get her in and give him the old... Uh... Yeah. Why am I still here? I don't, I don't know why I put up with it, to be honest. Nor do we, Tom. And uh, to Nor be honest, I am 
a, an integral part of this show, and I think if I left, it would... Well, okay, you say you're an integral part of the show. We'll come to that in a second. Look, I'm just going to say this to the, uh, the boys and girls out there uh, and the Lost fans. If you think you're up for the challenge to prove you're the biggest Lost geek out there, it's not just about how much stuff you've got, it's what's going on in your big lost brain that counts. Uh, if you think you're the ultimate lost obsessive, email a webcam message to us explaining why. Send it to lost on sky one at sky.com. Lost on sky one at sky.com. The winner will be joining us for a big geek off quiz at the end of the series. Now, you say you're an integral part of the, the show, Tom. Um, your Geeky Tom Facebook group has now got. 148 members. Ray, come well, on, right, to be honest. And it was Tom's uh, 18th birthday on Saturday just gone. So <laughs> make a young man very happy and join his <laughs> Facebook page. Oh. Any, any message to your Facebook fans? Um, we haven't got time, I'm afraid. Uh, Lost is on a break this weekend. Why would you do that to us, Lost? So join us on Sunday the 22nd of March when we'll be discussing episode nine, which is called Namaste. Very exciting. Hey. In the meantime, you can watch all of our Lost Initiative shows so far at sky.com forward slash lost. Keep your theories and your emails coming in, please. Until then, namaste. You, you know I'm 26, though, not 18. Shut up. I bet you're curly-whirly, it's someone we know.